The factors to consider are, are, one of them is certainly the patient's underlying medical status. Um, so going into the injection, the blood pressure ideally should be well controlled, given that uh, steroids can cause some fluid retention and edema associated with that, um, as well as um, some increase in blood pressure, as well as the general immunological status of the patient and a, a good control of the diabetes, for example, where patients should be reasonably optimized. I mean, somebody, let's say, having an ejection fraction of 10% uh, that can barely function uh, uh, may need a medical clearance. Those patients that are on blood thinners need a medical clearance that allows them to, to stop their blood thinners to be able to, uh, to be prepped for a spinal injection. So a, a medical optimization um, for that's going to allow the patient to accept the injection in, in, a, in a safe manner, I, th I think is quite material. More patients are on anticoagulants than ever. So um, often, I don't think we should take the stoppage of the anticoagulants into, into our own, own hands. We should allow the cardiologist or the neurologist uh, or whoever's prescribing it, the primary care physician to, to stop the medication. Often um, stopping of the anticoagulant also, also um, may indicate bridging, uh, for example, with Lovenox or some other um, approach just to maximize the safety for the patient from a cardiovascular and from a cerebrovascular perspectives.